Throughout the past year, we have reported extensively on all the changes to voting in America because of the pandemic and because of our politics. Tonight, we're bringing back our series Ballot Watch because there is an unprecedented new wave of state election laws on the horizon aimed at making it harder to vote. And today, the Supreme Court, the justices heard a major case that could make it harder to challenge restrictions in the years ahead. Here's our Devin Dwyer. Today at the Supreme Court, a major showdown over voting rights as Arizona Republicans defend two state laws that limit how ballots are cast. These measures are designed to provide order and uh, secure the elections and provide confidence in the results. One measure requires election officials to throw out votes cast in the wrong precinct. Another bans the practice of third party ballot collection or allowing someone else to turn in your absentee ballot for you. To us, it's a fundamental issue of right versus wrong. It's all about the integrity. There's no evidence of widespread voter fraud in Arizona, where 80 percent of voters in 2020 cast ballots early. Democrats say the real purpose is to make it harder for minorities to vote. If people have less access to mail, then in fact, getting that ballot back is a big deal. But for somebody who lives in in a rural community where you may live 50 or 75 miles from a post office box that you share with a bunch of other families because they're hard to come by, then that's a whole different story. Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 says laws which result in a denial or abridgment of the right of any U.S. citizen to vote on account of race or color are illegal. The provision has never been tested at the high court, but eight years ago, a hostile conservative majority effectively gutted a separate part of the law, one that required states with a history of racial discrimination to pre-clear election rule changes with the Justice Department. The court needs to send a strong statement that the Voting Rights Act will be there for the American public, especially at a time when we see politicians in the state trying to put barriers in front of the ballot box. Republican lawmakers in at least 43 states are considering more than 250 proposed bills that would make it harder to vote. What do they do? They do things like restrict access to vote by mail. They impose stricter photo identification laws. They slash voter registration opportunities and they aggressively purge voters from the rolls. Many of the measures target early voting, which exploded in popularity during 2020 and led to historic turnout. 30 states made it easier to vote by mail because of the pandemic, but now at least 24 states are considering measures to scale it back in future elections. Who are the losers? Well, of course, all voters lose when you restrict voting access. But if you said within that subset, Uh, you would see that it is almost inevitably aimed at either minority voters or young voters. Democratic election lawyer Mark Elias says the tidal wave of new laws reflects former President Trump's lie that the election he lost was rigged. They are restricting voting rights, not just in purple states, but they are doing it in red states as well. And and it is that reason that I am so confident that this is a product of showing fealty to a failed one term president as it is anything else. We must pass comprehensive election reforms, and we must do it now. As Trump prods his allies, Republican-controlled state legislatures have been moving quickly. In Iowa, Republicans have sent the governor a bill to slash the early voting period by nine days and impose tighter deadlines on mail-in ballots. The fact of the matter is there are Americans across this state that have some concerns about what happened in this last uh, election. In Georgia, which helped decide the presidential race and gave Democrats control of the U.S. Senate, protests as Republicans advance a sweeping crackdown. Now, Republicans in the Georgia General Assembly are trying to change the rules of the election here in Georgia. Rules that you wrote because you were handed defeat in November the 3rd and again on January the 5th. House Bill 531 is designed to begin to bring back the confidence of our voters back into our election system. They want to restrict placement of ballot drop boxes, cut hours for early voting on weekends, and require photo ID to vote by mail. For people who have a driver's license, who have the privilege to have a driver's license, maybe that's no big deal to have to do that. But for somebody who doesn't have a driver's license, then they have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. Are any of these measures that are being proposed, do any of them legitimate? Most of these measures really don't make the election more secure. I mean, even if you set aside the fact that there is vanishingly little, if any, fraud in American elections, there, there's nothing that makes the election more secure by, uh, by saying that 
uh, the election day is has to be shorter. More than half of all voters believe the 2020 election was secure. It's a view shared by the Trump Justice Department and dozens of federal judges. Still, nearly three in four Republicans disagree. I mean, how do you restore confidence when you have half the electorate, 73 percent of Republicans say they, they thought there was widespread voter fraud? That, I think, is the big question. I think the real challenge for our democracy moving forward beyond laws and lawsuits is how do we get to a place in which both political parties agree that we hold and should hold fair and free elections? In Arizona, Attorney General Mark Burnovich says the answer is in the rule of law. Look, I'm a first generation American and I understand how important, you know, symbolically, emotionally um, and practically that right to vote is. You want to make sure that everyone has confidence in the results and no one can go around saying that somehow there was some shenanigans or something or somebody was disenfranchised. And Devin Dwyer joins me now. Uh, Devin, you covered today's Supreme Court arguments over Arizona's election laws, and I know you're so good at reading the legal tea leaves. What did we learn about just how the justices might rule? Well, Juju, it seems likely that the court's conservatives will actually uphold those two Arizona laws, the one uh, on out-of-precinct voting and the ban on ballot collection. Justice Brett Kavanaugh pointed out that since many other states have these rules, uh, and since a bipartisan commission in 2005 actually found some legitimate concerns for ballot collection, uh, he said there are reasonable race-neutral justifications for both. And, of course, even the Biden administration, surprising to many people, wrote a letter to the Supreme Court, said they didn't think these two Arizona laws violated the Voting Rights Act. But the big question is, how will the justices write this opinion? What sort of test will they create for figuring out when laws do uh, constitute racial discrimination? That's the big concern. And tonight, Juju Democrats, civil rights advocates are very nervous that this conservative majority on the court will make it harder to challenge election laws in the future. Fascinating, Devin. But even as we wait for this decision, the House tomorrow is expected to pass a sweeping package of new voting reforms backed by Democrats. What might that accomplish? And and what do you think the Republicans will say as backlash? Yeah, I mean, even as all of those state restrictions are in the pipeline, they're on the horizon. Democrats tomorrow in the House will uh, vote to pass this sweeping bill. It's 800 pages, Juju. It's called the For the People Act of 2021, a major Democratic priority. And it would set some national standards for voting. It would mandate automatic voter registration. Uh, It would expand voting by mail, mandate drop boxes in certain places. In fact, the bill would even mandate two weeks of early voting in every single state. Uh, As you alluded to, Republicans are opposed to this. They say uh, it just favors Democrats politically. uh, And that's why Juju faces very long odds in the Senate with that razor thin majority. Uh, But Democrats tonight saying they're going to fight for it there. Juju? Clearly the lines are drawn. Thanks to you, Devin Dwyer. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.